Hey everyone, it's Nurse Mike here from SimpleNursing.com. Today we're tackling antidepressants. We're talking SSRIs, MAOIs, TCAs, and SNRIs. All made simple for nursing school and the NCLEX. Safety tips, side effects, and all the must-know key memorization tricks. So for all my Simple Nursing members, be sure to grab these Psych Pharmacology Study Guides, and let's get started. Now, antidepressants, the big mamas here. We have SSRIs, SNRIs, TCAs, and MAOIs. Now, we'll be covering these one by one, but first, let's cover the four rules to antidepressants. Make sure to pull out this study guide for this section so you can follow the key points. Since the NCLEX will not test you directly on the mode of action, or basically how the drug works, rather it tests safety on how the drug will harm or kill the patient. So guys, we'll be focusing on the need to know for the NCLEX, not just the nice to knows. So these four universal principles are NCLEX patient safety. Number one, increased risk of suicide. As antidepressants elevate the mood, it gives the patients more energy. Energy to go out and carry out the suicide. So a big thing to write down is that antidepressants can actually increase suicidal thoughts in the first few weeks of treatment. And the big risk is for young adults, 18 to 24 years old. So we always, key term here, notify the provider of any suicidal thoughts and always clarify any new prescription. Guys, we're monitoring the clients for keywords. New thoughts of suicide, unusual behavior, worsening depression, or sudden changes in mood. These patients are the most at risk for suicide. Now, number two is the slow onset and the slow taper off. Never stop abruptly. They're taken for a few weeks to reach that therapeutic range. So educate patients when saying, this med is not working after the first week, or they're also saying something about sexual dysfunction. Patients need to know about this first so they won't stop taking the drug. Now, third is we never mix these key words here. SSRIs with St. John's wort and MAOIs with any other antidepressants. We're talking TCAs, SSRIs, even SNRIs. Guys, this could lead to deadly serotonin syndrome. So, Two-week washout period is needed. Guys, keyword there, two weeks. Write that down. Keywords, never start a new antidepressant while tapering off an MIOI or another. So just coming off the day before is a big no-no. Always a taper off and never mix. Now, point number four is all psychiatric drugs usually decrease the blood pressure. So we teach slow position changes for risk for falling and causes weight changes mostly weight gain. Be sure to have this study guide handy for this section so you can follow the content and make this knowledge actually stick. Now, first up are the SSRIs, sertraline, cetylopram, and escitalopram. Guys, those came up the most often on all the quiz banks, but we also have paroxetine and fluoxetine. Now, SSRIs are given mainly for depression, anxiety, and PTSD. Now, the mode of action is quite simple. Typically not tested on the NCLEX, but it could come up on pharmacology exams. So guys, just let the name help you. For SSRIs, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. Basically inhibits the reuptake of serotonin, keeping more around. So serotonin levels are increased in the body. Now, the four common side effects, which usually improve after three months. Number one is weight gain. Number two, which is a big one, sexual side effects. The key point, and always on the NCLEX, write this down, sexual dysfunction. So just remember, sertraline causes sexual dysfunction. And there's no sedation. So don't be tricked. SSRIs usually cause insomnia. Now, priority key points. We use the acronym SSRI. S for the suicide risk that is increased when starting the med or changing the dose. Again, high risk is age 18 to 24. And a key priority to monitor, big key point right here, report more energy without change in depression. Guys, huge risk for suicide. 
Now the second S is for a slow onset and a slow taper off, usually taking about two to four weeks to reach that full effect. So we teach patients not to stop the med when starting and during this time. And guys, always taper off, never abruptly stop. Now the next S is for serotonin syndrome, a very deadly complication which happens if we use drugs or vitamins that also increase serotonin levels. Guys, we're talking about a serotonin overdose. So the big key point here is we never mix, write this down, St. John's wort, MAOIs, or tramadol, never to be mixed with SSRIs. Now the signs and symptoms include SRI, S for sweaty, hot fever, never cold or clammy. We're talking really hot here. R for rigid muscles, restlessness, and agitation. Guys, big key words. Write those down. We're talking tremors and hyperreflexia, not decreased DTRs. They'll actually be increased. And speaking of increased, I is for increased heart rates, known as tachycardia, over 100 beats per minute. Looking for more tips and strategies for questions like the ones we just covered? Well, our Simple Nursing membership includes exit prep lectures and thousands of questions across all nursing school and NCLEX topics. Now, the famous SNRI, duloxetine, given for depression and pain, like with neuropathy and fibromyalgia. So, guys, just think, duloxetine is for a dual purpose, both depression and pain. Or duloxetine helps to dull the pain with fibromyalgia. Guys, the big key point here is to teach that it helps with chronic pain and it also improves sleep in patients with fibromyalgia. Now, don't be tricked. Common test questions is a client refusing this medication. So, patients can always refuse medications. That's not the problem here. But the most appropriate response is to educate the patient on why the medication is given. Basically, the indication. So, for example... If a fibromyalgia patient is prescribed this and they're not depressed, they need to be educated on the purpose of why this medication will help with the pain. Now for our TCAs, tricyclic antidepressants. We have the two famous ones, amitriptyline and imipramine. So memory tricks here. Amitriptyline, just think Amy trips on things. So guys, we have slow position changes. And imipramine just basically inhibits my peeing. Now, the indication is for depression and anxiety, and it also helps with neuropathy or neuropathic pain with diabetes and fibromyalgia. But the common side effects to be written down here, the big, dry, the anticholinergic effects, guys. Basically, you can't see, pee, spit, or shh, poop. You get the point. So can't see, we get blurred vision and photophobia. Can't pee, we get urinary retention. Guys, that's a big NCLEX tip. Priority and most serious. We also can't spit, so we get a dry mouth. And you can't shh, poop, so you get constipation. Now, other side effects, we get sweating, seizures, and sedation, known as drowsiness or dizziness. So it's a priority to teach patients slow position changes. Now, speaking of patient teaching, we treat the dry by drinking the fluids. And for no seeing or dry eye, we teach them to wear sunglasses and eye drops and no spit for dry mouth, chew the gum, and for no poop, guys, we use fiber for constipation. Now, the big key points to write down again, orthostatic hypotension, we teach slow position changes because Amy Triptyline, just think Amy trips on things, guys, slow position changes. And urinary retention, again, the memory trick Imipramine inhibits my peeing. And lastly, we never take with an MAOI. Always a two-week washout period. So remember, no MAOIs and other antidepressants. We're talking TCAs, SSRIs, even SNRIs. So remember, MAOIs do not mix well with others. Not even a tapered-down dose. You must fully come off MAOIs first before transitioning to another antidepressant like a TCA or even SSRI. Make sure to pull out this study guide for this section so you can follow the key points. Now for the MAOIs, always an NCLEX favorite here. We have phenylzine, brand name Nardil, selegiline, and isocarboxicide. 
These are the first and oldest antidepressants, known as the big guns. Very powerful antidepressants used for depression, panic disorder, as well as social phobias. Now, the mechanism of action is that it increases availability of norepinephrine, serotonin, and dopamine in the brain. And it's used for depression that is resistant to other medications. So the key points for MAOIs is just the acronym MAOI. M for Massive Hypertension Crisis Risk. Usually a key sign is a massive headache. So we avoid the tyramine. Now that's an amino acid that helps regulate the blood pressure and actually triggers hypertension crisis, leading to death from a heart attack like an MI or a CVA stroke. So guys, the big no-no list to avoid. So no fermented alcohol, fermented fruits or veggies, and even meats. So number one, wine and cheese. Guys, no, so no wine tasting. Number two, beer and sausage and salami. No beer fests. And number three is chocolates. Guys, no visiting Charlie or his chocolate factory. <laughs> we are teaching patients to start the diet at least two weeks before starting MAOIs and continue for two weeks after stopping. So the memory trick is tyramine ends in I-N-E, like phenylzine, just think tyramine, or selegiline is tyramine. So no cheese, beer, sausage, or wine for tyramine. So big questions on the exams here. Can the patient eat fruit? Guys, yes. Can they eat veggies? Yes. Can they have fermented fruits or veggies, or even pickled veggies? No. Dried processed fruits? No. What about liver, tongue, sausage? Guys, these are all meats. So no, they cannot have it. Now, O is for OTC or over-the-counter drugs. And this could contribute to a hypertension crisis. So guys, we avoid CAN. C for calcium, A for antiacids, A for acetaminophen or basically Tylenol, and N for NSAIDs like naproxen and ibuprofen. Now our next O is for other antidepressants to avoid. Guys, remember, MAOIs do not mix with other antidepressants. So we're avoiding TCAs, SSRIs, SNRIs. This can actually trigger a serotonin syndrome. So we have a two-week washout period when changing or swapping out antidepressants. Guys, two full weeks, not two days, not the day before, two weeks from the ending. Keyword is fully taper off the other. So the big key point is no escitalopram, which is an SSRI, and no imipramine, which is a TCA. Guys, the NCLEX will try and trick you, so just make sure to know the names of these drugs. Now, I is for increased suicide risk, usually within the first few weeks of treatment or when the dose is increased. Now, this especially happens in children, adolescents, and young adults. So the key words to write down here, guys. Patient states this med is not working after two weeks. The first thing to do is assessment, guys. So further expressions of hopelessness, despair, or suicidal thoughts or harming themselves usually indicates a reason to report to the HCP. Now, pulling from our Simple Nursing NCLEX question bank, written by the people that actually wrote the NCLEX, here are the top missed test questions. Which medication has the most potential risk for injury? Select all that apply. Guys, we're looking for sedating meds here. So number one, Amy Triptyline. Remember, Amy trips on things. Very sedating, so yes. Option two, diphenhydramine or Benadryl. Yes, guys, very sedating. High risk for injury. How about option three, Colace? No, that's technically a stool softener. No sedation there. Option four, El Prazo lamb. Yes, guys, that's a benzo, Pam and lamb. Very dangerous life. And option five, Buspirone. No, remember bus, you can drive the bus. It's not sedating. Now, question two, which combination of drugs should the nurse question? Select all that apply. Guys, the main focus here is we don't want to mix between SSRIs and MAOIs. Because remember, MAOIs don't mix with others. 
So option one, sertraline with selegiline. Guys, that's a big no-no. That's an SSRI and MAOI. Never mixed. Option two, alprazolam with citalopram. So benzos and SSRIs, that's okay. Now third, buspirone with phenylzine. That's an anxiolytic with an MAOI. Technically okay. Now how about lithium with catorolac or brand name Tordol? That's a tricky one since lithium is a bipolar med and catorolac is an NSAID. So guys, that's a big no-no. And option five, St. John's wort with buspirone. Technically that is okay. Now question number three, which has the most potential for injury? Select all that apply. So option one, amitriptyline to treat fibromyalgia pain. Guys, yes, Amy trips on things. It's very sedative. High risk for injury. Now, option two, a headache while on phenylzine. Guys, yes, the very first sign of a hypertension crisis is a headache. Huge risk for CVA stroke. Now, option three, taking St. John's wort with sertraline. Guys, yes, sertraline is an SSRI. And St. John's wort, we have to stop. Guys, nothing really comes good from St. John's wort. Now, option four, discontinuing escitalopram the day before isocarboxanide. Guys, no, that's the most injury. Guys, we can't mix an SSRI and an MAOI within two-week period of each other. So not the day before. Has to be two weeks totally separated. Now, option five, a peanut butter and jelly sandwich while on selegiline. Guys, this is okay. Alcohol, cheese, and meats are okay. No tyramine in it for this MAOI. Now, if it was a grilled cheese, that's a big no-no. Or a ham sandwich, has meat in it, big no-no. And even beer and sausage, we have no alcohol, guys. So, no alcohol, cheese, or meats. Now, option number six, reporting sore throat, fatigue, and low-grade fever while on clozapine, or clozapping. Now, this technically isn't fair because this is an antipsychotic drug. But guys, yes, clozapping zaps WBCs making a huge risk for infection and technically a risk for injury. Be sure to have this study guide handy for this section so you can follow the content and make this knowledge actually stick. Now we have two atypical antidepressants, trazodone and bupropione. So for trazodone, the indication is for a sleep aid and treats depression. So memory trick is the Z's in trazodone, which makes you sleepy and sedated. Or think of transodone, it basically puts you in a trance. Now the key is to avoid ETOH and other sedatives, such as benzos and antihistamines. And we teach the patient to take at night. Since it can cause orthostatic hypotension, we also teach slow position changes. And a very rare complication is a priapism. So teach a patient that if an erection lasts longer than four hours, to go to the hospital. Now next is bupropion, SR or XL. Brand name is Wellbutrin. The indication is for depression and an aid to stop smoking. Now the side effects is insomnia, headache, and weight loss, which is probably not a bad side effect. Now teaching, guys, we never double up on missed doses, just like any other medication. And nicotine gum may be prescribed in addition to help stop smoking. Now, administration, guys, the big key point here is XL and SR, or basically extended release and sustained release. We never crush, never chew, or cut these kinds of drugs. So meds labeled SR or XL should never be altered before admin. Always swallow whole with or without food. Guys, if you chew or crush, it could cause faster absorption and higher levels of the drug can be increased. Hence, the side effects will increase as well. Thanks for watching. Did you know you can unlock beautifully handcrafted study guides packed with key points and memory tricks from all our videos? Plus, you'll get access to over 1,200 exclusive videos not on YouTube, all neatly organized by nursing school topic to make that complex nursing knowledge actually stick. You'll also gain thousands of practice questions written by current professors and actual NCLEX writers. So for access to all this and more, click right up here or visit simplenursing.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. 
happy studying, and we'll see you in the next videos.